God bless you, saints. Praise the Lord. We thank you for being involved in the Bible study and all that you do. It is October 10th, 2024, a season of hurricanes and natural disasters. We thought it would be important that we would deal with that topic today. Some of you all are not able to make it and then I wasn't able to do a live so we are going to do a zoom recording YouTube recording so that those that desire to be in Bible study can be a part of it I'm going to jump right in the scripture in the interest of time I think I'm going to do that right away um, so that I can uh, move and push myself forward a bit um, with scripture so this helps me um the scripture that i want to come from is nahum chapter one it's one of those books we don't deal with very much but nahum has a lot to say it's, it's one of the books they call the minor prophets nahum chapter one the burden of nineveh the book of the vision of nahum the El elkoshite God is jealous, and the Lord revengeth. The Lord revengeth and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries, and his and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power, and will not at all equip the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind, and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. This is Nahum chapter one, verse four. He rebuketh the sea and maketh it dry and drieth up all the rivers and rivers Bashan languisheth, the Carmel and the flower of Lebanon languisheth. The mountains quake at him, the hills melt. The earth is burned at his presence. Yea, the world and all that dwell therein. Who can stand before his indignation and who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is pulled, poured out like fire and the rocks thrown down by him. I want to share some more passages. Um, I had did some a little research around hurricanes and whirlwinds. So my main passage from Nahum chapter one, but the Bible says a lot about windstorms, um, earthquakes. Matthew 24 talks about earthquakes. The Bible has a lot to say about um, tornadoes and hurricanes. For example, Hosea chapter eight and seven, for they sow the wind and they shall reap the whirlwind. The standing grain has no heads. It shall yield no flower. If it were to yield, strangers would devour it. Second Kings two and 11. And as they still went on and talked, behold, chariots of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And so when the Bible describes either the tornado or the hurricane, it uses the term whirlwind. And sometimes you can understand the context to distinguish whether the Bible is referring to a tornado or a hurricane. And in 2 Kings 2 and 11, when Elijah went up to heaven, he went into a, he went in a small uh, tornado. But Job 38 and 1 says, Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, So in that case, the Lord took the form of a whirlwind, a tornado, and was speaking to Job. Job 40 and 6. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. And that, so that's there it is again. Nahum 1 and 3, we talked about that. He, his way is in the whirlwind and the storm. Ezekiel 1 and 4, I can go on and on. As I looked, behold, a stormy wind came out of the north a great cloud with brightness around it. So there you see in Ezekiel passage, see an actual storm. Uh, Jeremiah 23 and 19 talks about a storm. Behold the storm of the Lord. Wrath has gone forth, a whirling tempest. It will burst upon the head of the wicked. Um, so there's a number of verses that deal with lightning and storms. Ze Zechariah 9 and 14, then the Lord will appear over them his ear will go forth like lightning. The Lord will sound the trumpet. Jeremiah 30 and 23, behold the storm of the Lord. And so one of the things that we notice um, in 
dealing with these storms is um, we see a form of punishment and judgment. And we have to be careful when we have this conversation because as we speak, people are without power. Um, there's a, uh, a death toll um, from the last hurricane that just took place. I'm going to share some information to the latest news reports. Um, even though ju judgment can be in the land, that doesn't mean we lack compassion. There are children without food, uh, people without electricity. We want to be a prayer for these people. And uh, in many cases, figure out how we can help. I called my cousin who lives in Florida. He's a pastor, Pastor Joe uh, and uh, Joe Davis. And uh, he talked about how they were blessed. He lives actually in uh, Tallahassee and the hurricane uh, missed them. And he, we were rejoicing. Um, he said uh, the last hurricane, I think Helene, about uh, 10 miles out, it was headed right towards his town. And, and the Lord allowed that hurricane to turn out of their path, which is, I think is incredible. Um, but I want to share, and I'm not going to be before you long, I just want to share some different um, information about the hurricanes um, that I think is important. Um, back in 2022, or back in 2020, during the heart of the pandemic, the first months of 2020, there were 10 natural, at least 10 natural disasters that took place that were devastating. There was the Australian bushfire, uh, devastating floods in Indonesia, the dreaded coronavirus, volcano eruptions in the Philippines, earthquakes in Turkey. This happened all in 2020. We're not even talking about today. The Caribbean earthquakes, China earthquakes, earthquakes in Iran, um, the Bible says in Matthew 24, there'll be earthquake in diverse places. Earthquakes, and when it's talking about the last days in particular, it says there's going to be earthquakes in diverse places. Russia, Philippines, and India, a locust swarm. There were swarms of locusts in East Africa, in parts of India and Asia, a cyclone in India, in Bangladesh, forest fires in India, floods in Assam. So we have all these natural disasters because we're in the end times. Um, snow in the Antarctica turns green. <laughs> we had to let, uh, we had out, out of control wild, wildfires, even in the United States. Uh, and fire tornadoes in California. Uh, we are truly in the last days. And these, and, and I had said, if anything that scares me more, it lets me know that we're truly in the last days, it's natural disasters. And our response is, I quote Revelations, Maranatha, even so, Lord, even so, come, Lord Jesus. If folk are still going to be unbelievers, unsaved, doubting, and continuing in their ungodly ways, it will be their own fault. Um, because the Lord is speaking in the whirlwinds. Again, that doesn't mean we don't want to be, uh, we need to be compassionate. We need to be Christians. Listen to, so let's go to, to 2024 today. Um, we had Hurricane Helene, uh, which was the one before Milton. Milton just struck, I think, was it last night or the night before, like yesterday, I think, and it's, it's October 10th today, um, and they both hit Florida. Hurricane Helene was a devastating tropical cyclone that caused widespread destruction and uh, fatalities across the southeastern United States um, just last month, September, the late, late last month. It was the strongest hurricane on record to strike the, the quote, the Big Bend region of Florida, the deadliest Atlantic hurricane since Maria in 2017, and the deadliest to strike the mainland since Katrina. We all remember Katrina from 2005. Um, this is lean. This is, we're not even talking about the one that just hit. The eighth named storm, fifth hurricane, and second major hurricane of 2024. So we've had eight already of these major storms um, in 2024. Helene began forming on September 22nd. I'm not going to go into too many details here. As a broad, low-pressure system, by the 24th of September, the disturbance had consolidated enough to become a tropical storm. 
and approached the Yucatan Peninsula, receiving the name Helene from the National Hurricane Center. Um, there's so much damage that has been done. Um, people are still reeling from the aftermath. And I, and I know that um, North Carolina was hit. Um, and I, I have friends in North Carolina. So the impact all around the world, Honduras experienced heavy rain. Uh, Mexico region received, um, they, lo they lost a lot of power. 14% of the people lost power um, in the region, that region of Mexico. Devastating, the people are still recovering. Uh, Milton, Hurricane Milton, which just hit, um, as I said yesterday, knocks out uh, millions, the power of millions of people and spawns tornadoes. There's already at least five dead um, from Hurricane Milton. Now listen, Saints, we're talking about churches. We're talking about families. And if you see, I'm gonna try to pull up uh, a picture um, that I want you to see uh, of people evacuating. Because what was happening is people found out that the storm was coming and they began to uh, hit the highway to try to beat the storm. And some people stayed and uh, they were advising people not to, uh, not to stay. Um, but some people have the mindset, I wanna weather the storm. This is the traffic. Um, so there, there are folks with family and children and small children, I have a small child. I couldn't imagine being in traffic, trying to flee my hometown to escape um, the devastation of the hurricane. Saints, this is going on right now. Um, I am broadcasting from the Midwest, just in case somebody's out of town listening to this. And we didn't even feel, we, we, we didn't get even rain here in Ohio. But as we speak, folks are trying to get out of uh, the region of the hurricane. You can see this traffic. Um, people escaping Hurricane Milton, trying to get to relatives, trying to scrape money together to try to uh, to uh, flee the hurricane and to try to have somewhere to live, try to have, try to have somewhere to stay. Um, it's it's bad, saints. It's bad, and uh, there are churches that need our prayers. There are families to uh, to be judgmental. Uh, but to just be prayerful and, and maybe think about ways um, that, that we can help. Here's the image I was trying to pull up. Sorry about that. We had some technical difficulties there. But uh, what are things that we can do, ways that we can help? There's, a, there's another picture um, near Tampa. People were trying to get out of harm's way. Tampa got really hit Tampa, Florida by the most recent hurricane. Um, so now let me get back a little bit into scripture. And uh, I don't intend to be before you very long. I want to hit some scripture here. Um, and so we read um, last time we were meeting, recently we talked about a storm from Matthew chapter 8 and 23. And when he was entered into the ship, uh, I'll pull this up for you. Uh, this is Jesus in the storm, and the Bible talks about uh, various storms. Um, but let me read this Matthew passage really quickly. Um, praise the Lord. Just so you can uh, see it here. Matthew 8 and 23. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea. Storms are nothing new. Um, some are mild. Some are devastating. Difficulties keeps going in and out. Um, this was a major storm at sea that Jesus were, and the disciples were in the midst of. Um, when he was entered into a ship, his, this is Matthew 8 and 23. His disciples followed him. Behold, there was, arose a great tempest in the sea and as much that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and woke him saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And people are saying that now um, in our society, Lord, save us, we perish. 
Help us, Lord. You have millions and millions of people as we speak um, that are, they don't know where they're going to find um, income. They don't know where they're going to feed their, feed their children. They've lost everything. Some people have lost their houses, the place that they grew up in. Uh, their neighborhoods that they grew up in will never be the same. Their favorite, even down to their favorite outfits, are waterlogged and irredeemable. Uh, baseball card collections, valuable prized possessions that people find identity in, uh, are gone. Churches gone and and having to be rebuilt if they can be rebuilt. Um, it's a natural disaster of epic proportions. This is a historic hurricane. Verse 26, and he says unto them, this is Jesus, why are you so fearful? Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea. There was a great calm, but the men marveled, saying, what manner of man is this that even the winds and sea obey him? God is in control, saints. Uh, my main message is that we, we don't always understand what's going on. We don't always try to have the answers when these natural disasters happen because we can be insensitive and uh there are people that are good saints and christians that are um in harm's way there are pastors that do not know where their their next uh meal is going to come from and, and how they're going to escape the natural disasters so we must be in prayer if, if ever the saints need to be praying it's right now make a phone call call your relatives we have them downtown you have people downtown downtown south, excuse me, in, in Florida, call your relatives, check on the folks that were in a natural disaster, that were in a uh, hurricane in um, North Carolina, call people. Um, it's the, the, the job of the saints to be compassionate. So we love you. Um, we, we definitely care about you. And um, we love those that are going through. Yes, judgment is in the land. Yes, they, they, my, 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 pastor cousin in florida he said florida needs to repent that's what he said he said florida i'm waiting on florida to repent uh we understand that but at the same time um people need the lord and we need god to stay the hand of the, the earthquake and to help people get resources that they need we love you we're just going to end right there lord just bless us today look on those that are going through the hurricane right now it could have been us and so the strong mustn't bear the, bear the infirmity of the weak. Keep us all together. Let people get resources and food that they need and housing. They're cold out there, and there's millions of people. And we know that this is the time of the, sign of the end times. In Jesus' name, bless us all together. Amen. God bless you, saints.